I believe with all my heart, Stan, and, and I, I, may, me, I may not be among the majority, but I believe that in the power of prayer, especially intercessory prayer. And I believe that when God's people pray and they repent, and they pray on behalf of this nation, and they repent on behalf of this nation, and they come against these things, the Lord in heaven hears that prayer. And he may not stop everything, because there are certain things that cannot be changed. Well, you remember that uh, in, in the vision of Michael Baldea, when Dimitri Dudeman came to him, he said, if my people will pray, once again, I will delay the season of sorrow. Amen. So the Y2K thing was delayed. So we can pray a delay. We may not be able to stop it, but, man, I'm all for delaying it. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, man, Stan, you must really want to see this bomb, bombs hit America. You want to see this judgment, don't you? Absolutely not. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent on my knees crying and weeping and praying for this nation that God would give us more time and that he would give me a way that I could tell more people and get more people saved. So, Amen. no, I don't want to see it come. Well, this is the thing, and this is the key right here. This is a very controversial, very difficult to understand topic I'm going to touch on right now real quick, which is, does prayer change or does it not change the future? Maybe visions that people have had, maybe dreams that people have had. And I'm here to tell you that, yes, that, that future, those things that God has shown can be averted. And if not averted, they can be postponed. But... That people need to pray and repent, and they need to intercede with all of their hearts. Because one thing the Lord has shown me, Stan, and, you know, this is something he's been showing me in recent times, is the future is fluid. It's not fixed in concrete. The only things that are fixed in concrete that are, it does say of the Lord, are things like the second coming of Christ. You know, he's coming back to take the earth. Those things cannot be changed. I agree with you. As, as you look back into the New Testament, you know, there were times where it says, and these things were fulfilled, so th these things were done so that the Word of God might be fulfilled. So, right. yes, I believe with all my heart that there are things that prayer and repentance can change. I also believe, as you said, that there are some things that can't be changed. Right. And to whatever degree we can change it, whatever degree we can delay it, let's get after it. Well, the Scripture cannot be altered, and it says there in Second Chronicles, if my people, now that's not the world, that's not the sinners, that's not the politicians, it's my people, that's the people of God, those that are His, really His, those that have, you know, His sign upon their foreheads, those that have His Spirit in them, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked, evil ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. So the Lord is faithful to his word, Stan. He cannot, he cannot go back on his word. His word stands forever. And what he said there is, stands today. If his people will humble themselves and pray, and I believe there is a hope in my heart, there's really hope in my heart that America, when he's going through a lot of this mess, America's going to go through a lot of heartache and a lot of turmoil and a lot of disasters. When America goes through much of this, America is going to turn back its face to God, call upon him, and the Lord is going to once again stand, have mercy upon this nation. Amen. I believe it. There's a great revival coming, because in the time of trouble, this is when uh, Americans that think that right now in the, in the blessing times, oh, I don't need to go to church, I don't need God, I'm doing just fine. I mean, why do I need it? Yeah, well, <laughs> when they find that there's difficulty to find food and clean water and and uh, difficulty to find a, a place to sleep and things like that, then, yeah, they're going to turn to God with all their heart. I believe there's a great revival coming in this nation, but I believe it's coming after great trouble. That's right, because it is the only way that the Lord is going to be able to bring in, in the harvest. Otherwise, how is he going to bring in the harvest in this country and all over the world? So this final harvest is going to be triggered by many of these cataclysms and many of these uh, wars that are going to... Uh, cause tremendous, tremendous uh, upheavals and uh, radiation. And my Lord, look at the Fukushima radiation arriving in our shores. We are not even talking about nuclear blasts going off. We are not even talking about our nuclear reactors, you know, melting down like in Fukushima. And, and, and it's already getting here. So, yes, the people are going to cry out to the Lord. They're going to turn their faces back to him, and they're going to repent. And 
he's going to hear their cry from heaven. And I believe, I agree with you completely, this is when this massive revival will take place that the Lord has given me. He's shown this to me. I have seen things that <laughs> I have never seen ever in my life. I, have, I haven't even seen it, uh, Stan, in the book of Acts. I, I mean, the things that the Lord has shown me are incredible. Let incredible me give you the verse on it. This is the verse, if you fi folks want to write this down, this is the verse that is talking about the revival coming to specifically America. Now, there's other places talk about the end time harvest and things like that, but this is the verse that is America's revival. Jeremiah 51, verse 33, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon, that's America, is like a threshing floor. In other words, it is the trouble hitting her. She's being slapped around. It is the time to thresh her, yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. So, once again, the harvest comes after the threshing. The smiles come after the beating. The joy comes after the, the trouble. And it's the same way in America. Right? It's the only thing. I mean, I've tried now for, well, I don't know, what, 25 years trying to get people to stop saying repent and hear the warning of Demetri Dudeman. And, you know we're barely even, even going, you know, we're barely even pay our staff. It's terrible. People haven't accepted it, but you wait when the trouble hits, then a lot of them will fall away. A lot of them will lose their salvation. A lot of them will fall into the mark of the beast, but a lot of them will be shaken awake. God knows their heart and he knows what it's going to take to get them to shake awake, wake up and repent, and turn to him. And I don't know if you agree with this, Augusto, but I believe that there's a high probability that there's going to be more people saved from now to the return of Jesus than was saved all the way back to the birth of Jesus. Oh, it's happening already. It's beginning. Uh, there's been more people saved in this last 10 years than in the whole history of Christianity. So uh, I believe it is, it is only going to intensify. There's a lot of, uh, you know, gloomers and doomers out there that they don't believe this is going to happen. I have, I've even had people ask me, how can these two things happen simultaneously, you know? Well, it's that, because the trouble comes that the revival comes. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I told them. I said, you know, maybe it's hard for you to understand these things, but as the darkness incre increases and intensifies, so will the glory. The Bible says, as evil abounds, so much the more does grace abound. In other words... As trouble right raises its head, it's, it's like I was teaching Friday night in our Bible study. I said, these two witnesses, see, people, they, don't have, they haven't got the revelation. These two witnesses are walking around for the last three and a half years of the tribulation, and here the Antichrist has walked in and sat on the Ark of the Covenant. He said he is God, set in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, and he is going to be speaking great things, great blasphemies against the God of heaven. But as he is doing this, these two great witnesses, these witnesses clothed in sackcloth and ashes, are going to walk around the streets of Jerusalem refuting everything he is saying, sticking their finger in his eye everywhere they can. They're going to be able to speak out all kinds and all manners of plagues upon the people, uh, including turning water into blood and closing the skies. I mean, it's going to be uh, probably, it'll be John the Revelator that was given the book of Revelation. Uh, I've never said this publicly before, but here it goes. And probably Moses that was there at the crossing side of the Red Sea. Moses saw all of those plagues upon Pharaoh. Now try to imagine Moses and John the Revelator, the one that got the, the book of the law and the book of Revelation, these two guys walking up and down the streets of Revelation, and every time the Antichrist raises his head or says something, they refute it, they're exactly against him, and they're two witnesses in the mouth of two witnesses of the last thing be established. And finally, the devil that raises from the bottomless pit kills these two witnesses. They lie in the street for three and a half days. The Bible says the exchange gifts, which probably is Christmas, and then in the sight of all men, these guys come back to life and raise up and go up into the sky like Jesus did. I mean, it's not going to be a piece of cake for the Antichrist the last three and a half years as he's walking around Jerusalem. He's going to have two big thorns in his side. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be glorious. Now, I don't know if, if, you're, if you've ever heard or familiar with this brother. His name is Sadhu Silveregg. Uh, no. He's from India. No. Uh, he's a he, tremendous, tremendous man. He's mightily used of the Lord. Well, he just came out with a statement 
which, you know, I, I, it reminded me uh, as you were speaking, he said the Lord showed him, you know, the Lord has taken him to heaven also, and he's had angel visits. I mean, God mightily uses him. But he said the Lord told him that the two witnesses are getting ready to appear, and he commanded him to begin to build them a place to live in Jerusalem. Now, this is in his website, and uh, when I read that, I said, whoa, <laughs> Lord have mercy. But yeah, these things are getting hot, Stan. I had an experience not too long ago uh, in March of this year, and I, I, I kept asking the Father, I said, Lord, how are all these things going to happen? I mean, all these miracles and signs and the revival, how is this going to be? How are we going to be able to do these exploits in the midst of all this ungodly mess? How, I mean, we're flesh. How can we do this? And I dealt with this issue for a long time. And in March 7 of this year, <laughs> he woke me up in the middle of the night. I was, I was asleep. I was in the middle of a dream. And he woke me up, and this is, he told me this thing three times, Stan. And this is what he said to me. At 12 midnight, the internal glory will be revealed. At 12 midnight, the internal glory will be revealed. At 12 midnight... The internal glory will be revealed. Are you saying eternal or internal? Internal. Internal. I-N. And I started doing some research in the, in the scriptures, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, and in 1 Peter, and uh, all throughout the New Testament, where it talks about the Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that glory that shall be revealed in us, you know, which is, of course, you know, the, the spirit of the, of the living God. Okay, well, I got to get you to hold on. Time has run out again. Folks, I love listening to him. I do think you should call the Prophecy Club and get his book, Smile, Jesus Loves You, and also the next 9-11 DVD is also available. In the meantime, call 785-266-1112. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Lindsey Williams has just released his new three DVD set. He says you must know the tactics of the elite in order to survive the new world order. Hear a Wall Street insider for the first time tell his story along with four prominent professionals revealing insider trading violations, destructive derivatives, what congressmen, judges, and some lawyers know that you are never told. Learn what the younger elite are taught. Topics are secrets I have never told before, how the elite make and preserve millions of dollars, how derivatives make super wealth, insider trading that changes wealth to super wealth, Americans financially betrayed by Congress, how the elite use gold and silver to profit, the paper currency con job. Call 785-266-1112, not available on the internet. Three hours, Tactics of the Elite. 785-266-1112, order Tactics of the Elite. 